as this game unfolds could be a factor in the kicking game and for the quarterbacks tonight. Can Clemson punch its ticket or the Panthers pull a big surprise? Like most of Kessman's kickoffs, that is a touchback. So here comes Trevor Lawrence, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions, ACC Newcomer of the Year in a landslide vote. Yeah, 6'6", 215. We've been watching him grow since the beginning of the year. Took over for Kelly Bryant early, and I think right now playing his best football. Seems to be in real command of the offense. Doing a really good job against blitzes, and that's what he's going to see tonight. Pat Narduzzi knows they've got to bring pressure. They've got to load the line of scrimmage against the run. Try to come after the young quarterback. Hasn't looked like a freshman all season long. This is ninth start. Expects to handle the championship game nerves just fine tonight. And it's Travis Etienne looking for room on the right side and finding it. Etienne into the secondary. A foot race. They won't catch him, and the Tigers score on the opening play. 75 yards. That's how you get championship weekend started for the Clemson Tigers. Break up the band. In the ACC championship. I mean, it, doomsday. Worst thing that could happen to Pitt as a big underdog is to give up a long touchdown run to Travis Etienne. His 20th rushing touchdown of the season, extending his Clemson single season record. It took him 13 seconds. Hugo with the conversion as he exploded around the right end. The center, Fastinelli, does a good job. He's right in the middle. He'll get a block that pushes it to the outside, and you'll see him cut underneath that. Other than 50 getting that block, it's really just getting a hat on a hat. And then you're talking about maybe one of the most unique running backs in college football. When he gets a crease and he has room to be able to build up that acceleration, it's so tough on the secondary, especially in these conditions on a slippery field, to try to deal with that speed. He's a Heisman talent, Kirk. He doesn't have a heavy workload. Only his 165th carry of the season. Dabo says he's just fine with that. Travis does not seek the spotlight. Very humble, modest guy, but the, the raw talent is just astonishing. And after the way they played against South Carolina last week, you know that there was a lot of energy at Clemson this week, especially with their defense, who's about to come out on the field. They, they wanted to prove a point today, and they got off to a pretty good start, obviously. Tigers Longest play of scrimmage from the season and the longest that the Panthers have allowed. BT Potter boots it away. Chris, I always love this. Watch Trevor Lawrence. Simple inside zone read. He's 45, 50, 60 yards downfield, trying to find somebody to get in front of to try to pick up a block. Just don't block in the back. Right? Oh, no, no, exactly. But I just love the young freshman leading. That's, you got, the guys will see that in the film room, and they'll really respect the fact he's 50, 60 yards downfield, trying to pick up a block on a safety. Well, when you win the toss and defer, you run the risk that your offense is going to take the field behind. And here comes Kenny Pickett, the sophomore from Jersey Shore, near Bruce Springsteen's hometown of Asbury Park. Quadri Olison is the back, but they're throwing. In the first play of the game, they try to swing it out wide, and it's incomplete. Rafael Arujo Lopes was covered by KJ Davon Wallace. Yeah, Pickett is a quarterback that made his first start last year against the Miami Hurricanes the day after Thanksgiving. Is this year really grown, I think. Things are beginning to slow down, like most quarterbacks, through a lot of reps. Loves to move outside of the pocket. Athletic guy. And if against this Clemson defense, they've got to be able to get him on the edges, especially in obvious passing situations. And tonight, he's got to be a very good complement to the running game. Panthers shift around on second and ten. Here's Olison, and he stopped behind the line. Flying downhill was Isaiah Simmons, and Dexter Lawrence plugged the middle. Boy, this offense has their hands full. Remember, they are a one-dimensional attack. They like the run. They lean on this offensive line. They have got to do a good job up front. Olison and Hall are their two backs. Max, the most explosive receiver on the outside, 11. And French, you'll see him outside, not only in opportunities to catch the ball, also use him a lot in jet sweeps. Third and 11. And this predominantly Clemson crowd making noise. Here comes pressure. Pick it. 
trying to survive, and he can't. He is going to be sacked by Dexter Lawrence. What a series for the veteran tackle. But this offensive line lost their leader, Jimmy Morrissey, to center. Dentino has had to move over to center. New left guard. You see Christian Wilkins fighting through that gap. But this is a defense that has a lot of pride. They gave up over 600 yards last week to South Carolina. 510 through the air. They are fired up, and Brent Venables is fired up to get back out on this field. Kirk Christodoulou, the Aussie punter, has had problems this year in sloppy conditions. From his goal line, delivers a low boot. It's pretty good. It's going to force Amari Rogers to field it on the bounce inside the 35. Rogers should game seven nothing on the lightning strike by ETN on the first play, and now they hand it off, spelling him with the veteran. And it's a short game by Feaster. So this Clemson offensive line, Mitch Hyatt, second consecutive year, won the Jacobs Trophy as the best blocker in the ACC. Yeah, Fasanelli, a leader there in the middle. What a talented group of receivers. ETN already the big run. Higgins on the outside. Renfro option routes in the inside along with Rodgers. They fake it to Feaster, and Lawrence is going to loop the ball downfield and drops it perfectly in. But T. Higgins couldn't come up with it on a wet night. I mean, just missed. I mean, that's a perfect throw. Actually, really tight coverage and good coverage by Penn here in Pinnock. But watch this ball drop right over the shoulder, right into Higgins, who's an outstanding receiver. Usually pulls that in, just could not get control of the ball. And Pitt catches a break there. Yeah, only his third drop all season long, as you said, very short-handed. And now. Panthers defense a chance to get off the field. Tigers need seven on third. No blitz. Lawrence rolls and delivers a short throw, but well short of the marker is Trevion Thompson. Yeah, down. That's a huge win for Pitt after giving up that first touchdown. Show they, that their goal tonight is try to get the freshman quarterback, as talented as he is, to third down and give him a lot of different looks. That time they showed pressure, came out of it, just kind of sat back in a zone and forced him to get rid of the football. And they're well short of that first down. The senior from Florida, the speedy receiver, Rafael Arujo Lopes is the punt returner. Will Spires gets a lot less work as a punter than the Clemson kickoff man gets this season. Just his 50th punt all year. Rolls out, boots it right along the ground, right off the back of one of the cover men, and it just stops dead at the 35. Hit him right in the numbers. <laughs> I think that was the snapper yeah, was. that was running yes. downfield. Yeah. That's a weird, weird line drive from Spires. Remember, the field conditions are going to cause issues tonight for the specialist. This is funky. Yeah. I, I don't even think it was, I don't even think it had to do with the conditions at all. I think he just hit it, just missed it. Pitt gets good field position here. I'll take over at the 39 after the 15-yard punt. And they get the ball to the edge to Darren Hall, part of that talented backfield. They like to use these backs as receivers, but Trey Lamar's out there on the edge making a play. They're trying to get the ball to the outside because this defensive front is as good as you'll see in college football, led by the leadership of Wilkins. Farrell gets the pressure, 99. Trey Lamar and, and, and Kendall Joseph in this type of game will make a lot of plays against the run. Very talented group on the back end. They need to step up. Wasn't their best effort last week against South Carolina. Brent Venables talking about some missed assignments and blown assignments. They're going to look to play better tonight. Ball start. A false start. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. There's a 500-yard passing game they gave up to the Gamecocks, and Venables used some strong words, Kirk. He used, quote, asinine, ignorant, to describe some of his own adjustments as well as the team's play. And they gave up some explosive. You're just not used to seeing touchdown plays of 67, 75, 32, 20. No, they won, and Debo said that. They won big by three touchdowns, but the defense, I'm sure, had a pretty... Uh, Hectic and emotional week at the practice field this week to get ready. Panthers, of course, a much different style of attack than South Carolina. The last thing they want to do, though, is put themselves behind the sticks. Prior to the snap, delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. So you got a four-yard loss and then back-to-back -back five yard penalties. Yeah, they'd start. I mean, think about getting that opportunity the way this game started. 
Clemson miss, kind of has a miscue with the punt. Start at your own 40. This is it's kind of like, all right, got our feet under us now. The game's getting started, and now they have a couple miscues. And with their offensive style, this is not pretty. Sean Watson calls the plays. They're going to have to hurry again. Yeah. Gonna, yep. Often the calls come in late for this team. They break the huddle late, and they have to spend a timeout. So in Virginia now. Man who was this long snapper for that kick, by the way. Pat Quirin said to be a Green Beret training. So the Panthers, after two five-yard penalties and a timeout, may have they, committed a third. Uh, another penalty. Ball start. Offense. Number 70. Five-yard penalty. Second down. This is almost... The center. Yeah, th this is exactly Pat Narduzzi's worst nightmare. I mean, you give up a touchdown on the first play, you're... A four touchdown underdog. N not many people outside of your own locker room are giving you much of a chance. And to come out of the game, give up that touchdown, and the offense having these miscues. Man, this is a tough way to get it started. Sean Watson calls the plays. Doesn't have a big play chart for second and 29. And Darren Hall slammed down by Lawrence, who is eating alive that middle of the Pittsburgh offensive line. Yeah, he and Christian Wilkins both. Mentioned how Pitt has had to move around some of that all the offensive linemen they, They've been a real strength of theirs But with Jimmy Morrissey going out and Connor Dentino moving from left guard to center Bryce Hargrove now in it Left guard so you think about the left guard in the center playing new positions It's, it's tough to go up against Wilkins looking and, and Lawrence looking right across from you and you're still trying to build that continuity Third and 28, and the Tigers bring some pressure, and Pickett's, again, scrambling for his lives, hit, ball comes out, it's Wilkins, rumbling toward the end zone, and knocked out inside the five. He finds all sorts of ways to make plays. Well, they brought a blitz this time with Isaiah Simmons. Farrell actually on the other side eventually gets to pick it, but it's Simmons who knocks the ball loose. Watch Simmons come here on the blitz. Farrell comes around on the edge. That's the pressure. The, it's just nothing Pitt can do to slow it down. Watch 11 eventually get him on the arm right there. That's what sent the ball up into the air. And then Wilkins, who is a tremendous athlete, as we've seen over these last four years, presence of mind to be able to pick it up. And you know how he is. He's thinking goal line. Get me to the end zone right now. Well, he's found the end zone twice as a running back. The progressive pylon cam shows you what it's like to have a 300-pounder <laughs> rolling right into your lap there. Oh, Let's man. see if they reward him by sending him out. He, he's not on the field at the moment, but if they get a little closer to the goal line, bring back Mr. Wilkins. It's ETN. Long touchdown to open the game. Short touchdown to make it 13 nothing. And the nightmare start for the big dogs from Pittsburgh continues. Let's double check that he did get across. Good read there by Lawrence. Good extension, easily in for the touchdown. And Clemson, four plays and two touchdowns and an early 14 0 nothing lead after the extra point. Panthers down. Two scores and have minus 13 yards in offense and three penalties. So Wilkins picks up a little interception as Simmons hits Pickett's arm, rumbles down inside. He made the rankings and how your school can compete. Travis Etienne, two carries, two touchdowns. 75 yarder to begin the game and a two yard run to cap a very short drive. Officially, it was Wilkins a fumble recovery because Pickett's arm was not going forward. Maurice French, as a flag comes out, returns the ball near the 30, but this has the look of yet another Pittsburgh penalty, yeah, Kirk. Looks like a hold. You know, <laughs> postseason experience, such a huge gap. There's a talent gap, return. let's be honest. Holding number 35 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. But it's the first kind of postseason game for these pit players. The 10th for Clemson, and it's showing. To Matt Berry for an update. You guys, the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. We head to Indianapolis in the Big Ten Championship game. Coming in, Dwayne Haskins led the FBS with 42 touchdown passes. Go ahead and make it 43. Great pocket presence. Terry McLaurin, 16 yards. Buckeyes up early, 7-0. Christian Kirk, back to you. To expect that Dwayne Haskins would be deserving of an invite to New York for the Heisman Trophy presentation as a finalist. 
he can come up with another big performance tonight. Quadri Olison, they just cannot get these running backs going. That's the focus of the offense, but the Tigers are ready, Kirk. Impact players from Chick-fil-A. Well, you're right. Olison has got to be able to get things started, and I think one of the ways that they might try is try to get the ball outside to Mack, who's a playmaker. Joseph, we talked about in the, in the lineups, how important of a role he has leading that front to be physical against this running game, and Clem Farrell, who has an outstanding ability with that first step to be able to get by all Offensive tackles and, and pressure picket tonight. Net one yard for the running backs in their first three carries. Play action and Pickett's going to throw over the head of Taysir Mack, the receiver who broke the route off covered by Terrell. Yeah, that's just a miscommunication where, where Mack and Pickett are adjusting. You're thinking about the, based on the coverage, the, the route has an adjustment. Mack pulled it back, and I think Pickett saw a certain coverage and thought he might adjust it to go by the defensive back. and. Obviously not on the same page. Tough start for this pit offense. Couldn't be tougher. Self-inflicted much of it. Talent on the other side has a whole lot to do with it as well. Yeah, they're, they're showing they're... pressure again here. And they bring some. And Pickett, as he's falling down, skips a throw, and there's a flag back near where the quarterback was knocked down. I don't know what the body slam call is for, for a tackle grabbing and body slamming a defender, but that's holding what you have here. Offense, number Guess it's holding. That penalty is declined, results of the play. So it's holding, holding with down. air quotes. It was more of a, a tackle? Yeah, it was, it was more of a WWE <laughs> takedown. If you can't beat him, just body slam him. 70 on the far left, Farrell. I'll tell you how to take him down. There you go. In wrestling, that's two points, but in football, it's 15 yards, huh? Farrell's doing work. A couple series in, can barely read the number there on the back. Here's Padulu at his goal line. Rodgers wants to bring this one back into pit territory. It's a high boot, and he's going to backpedal and make a fair catch at the 43. Two back look. That's Feaster in motion. They flip it to him behind the line of scrimmage. And he's able to fight back for no game. Pat Narduzzi made his name at Michigan State as a defensive coordinator and, and did such an amazing job there with Mark D'Antonio. Had some great teams, built a reputation for quarters coverage. He's trying to make sure his glasses are right, make sure he's seeing this game right. But they have a, an aggressive mindset now at Pitt. He brought that same philosophy over here. And you know they, the way this game has started, I think he's got to rely on his defense to try to make a play here by being aggressive. Play action. Lawrence goes downfield, and the catch is made. Justin Ross, the talented true freshman. Big, big future for this guy. Chris, the, the accuracy of the throw by Trevor Lawrence. Look at this. It's true freshman to true freshman. Throws it away from the defender over his outside shoulder, where Ross, who's having a monster year as a freshman, goes up and can make a play. Again, good coverage, better throw. And now a handoff. This is Darian Kendrick, another true freshman. Yeah, the future is pretty bright for this Clemson team. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, and again, here's the, here's the frightening thing. We've had him a few times this year. Scratching the surface of where he's eventually going to go. And, we, you know, he wears 16. People talk about Peyton Manning when he was a freshman in Knoxville. This kid, because he's 6'6", 215 pounds, already plays with the maturity of a junior or senior. But the touch, the hands, the athletic ability, and then the poise to go with it. It's just rare. You don't see it. And we throw far side. It's off the hands of his receiver, Ross. Yeah, the game just feels very slow for him. I had a chance to talk to him this week for the first time. Doesn't really get nervous, doesn't carry the butterflies into the game. What a gift that is, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think a lot of it goes back to he played at a high school. There's a lot of pressure. He won a lot of football games when, when he was in, in high school. And I think he was 52-2 and two yeah. as a starter. It's pretty good. 41 in a row at one point. And, but, 41. I mean, but he played it for a program where he yeah. felt that pressure. And I think it allowed him to get here. And he... You know, it's a bigger stage, but it's not any different as far as trying to execute. Panthers back out, and there's a hand up to Feaster inside, who busts through a tackle and is knocked down inside the 20. About that. Tackle by Stocker. They go with a counter on third down and 10, where they end up pulling around. To see the right guard, 76 Pollard, bring around the big tight end, Richard, and surprise Pitt who was thinking about a pass and trying to get pressure and trying to get after the quarterback and 
Ended up sneaking, picking up about seven yards. Nearly two plays in mind before that call, and the offense on the field on fourth and three. Tigers, nine out of 16 on fourth down this year. Feaster is the back. And a low, uncharacteristically off-target throw by Lawrence behind Kendrick, and the Panthers make a stand. Well, here he should have waited just a hair. He's eyeing this man right here and seeing where he goes to determine what he's going to do with the football. If he waits just a little bit longer, he can throw this ball into this window instead of here. And I think the defender, the placement of that defender affected the accuracy of that football. I think if he waits a beat, that receiver Thompson clears the defender and it makes it a much easier throw. Panthers avoid Kirk what might have been a first round knockout if the Tigers had gotten in the end zone there. So Pittsburgh trying to first of all avoid penalties, keep their poise and maybe think about a first down or two. Jet sweep, they run a lot of them. This is French and he gets around the end and Maurice French scoots for the first positive play for Pittsburgh of the evening as we check back with Matt Berry for an update. Time for your direct TV more for your college football thing back to the Big Ten Championship and Northwestern answers John Moten 77 yard touchdown run midway through the first we're tied at seven apiece Look how his defense continues to surrender long scoring plays well, Moten stepping in there 16 yards for French French because he spells it with two F's at the front Darren Hall Breaks three, and he's into the secondary. And all of a sudden, Pittsburgh starting to muscle downfield. Back-to-back big gains inside the 45. Really good block here by the center. Dentino, watch him work this way and then climb up to the linebacker. Does a nice job of helping and then climbing and picks up the linebacker, Trey Lamar. And that's what opened up a just enough of a crease there to be able to get these backs some running room. This time it's Hall, who's a little bit quicker than Olison. Hall trying to join Olison. Over the 1,000-yard mark this season. Became a father in August to a daughter. Very mature, personable young man. He's got it again, but spins for just a short gain. That was Lamar, the middle backer, filling. But tomorrow on ESPN, the exclusive reveal of what fans have been waiting for, the college football playoff. Matchups: the Capital One Orange Bowl, Goodyear Cotton Bowl on December 29th. I'll join via satellite, you and Reese and the gang. Final top 25 rankings. It's a four-hour special. We're going four strong tomorrow. You'll be on. You'll be on satellite for a hit or two, right? I'll be up there, on South Beach. <laughs> Billy Carter. Motions back across and they hand it to Olison who had to sidestep some traffic but then powers forward for about three. It'll be third down and five and folds. Panthers need five on third down. Olison hits a gap and still running. Bangs down inside the 20 as you get a glimpse of what these pit runners can do. And that, that's a nice job again. I want to go back to the offensive line because they're getting this defensive line. They're getting movement. Once you get them moving sideways in the zone blocking scheme, these backs do a good job of being able to eventually cut that back right there. And it takes a special back with very good vision and good acceleration at 225 pounds to be able to do that. Look out because Brett Venables has spent a timeout on defense and his guys may be in for a tongue lashing. The Panthers have yards on this drive. They're down in the red zone. First down after Clemson's defensive timeout. On the jet sweep. Here's the speedy freshman. The Lee Carter had never been seen on the field, Kirk, until he popped into the Duke game with a number they had never not worn before. Ran for 137 in the game. Well, he's got such speed. He's one of those guys you just want to get on the field, and he and French give them a dimension. I just love the play call. I think Sean Watson floats that out there once in a while to let Clemson know you better not crowd down on our inside zone game. We're going to keep stretching you out wide to keep you outside to have to respect the outside stretch and the, zone, and the uh, jet sweep and that opens up some inside running lanes. Olison. Excellent pursuit. That was Terrell setting the edge and Lawrence who caught up to him. 
Yeah, the defensive backs in this game have got to do a good job of being in run support. Ter Terrell did that very thing. He kind of set the edge there as a corner, let the rest of the defense eventually be able to run in. Mullen one on one side and Terrell on the other. They're very good cover corners, but Brent Venables this week needs him to be involved in the run. So after that timeout, comes his defense. Two productive plays for no gain, and the Panthers need 10 on third. Pickett has a clean pocket for the end zone. Overshot Arujo Lopes, and it's fourth down as the quarterback got knocked down. Yeah, he, he had Arujo Lopes against a bigger nickelback, Isaiah Simmons, who's listed at about 230. Arujo Lopes has great quickness, undersized in the slot, but there's Wilkins once again, just as Pickett gets rid of the ball, making the quarterback be aware of his presence. Alex Kessman is a sophomore, 10 for 13 on field goals, had a couple of misses in the tight loss at Notre Dame, but has been pretty clutch in other moments this season. He's got a long distance leg, somewhat less steady inside of 40 yards. This is from 37, sliding, but he knocks it through. So Pittsburgh on the board. After nope, that stays away. Now, something positive for Pitkirk. They're on the board after their defense got that fourth down stop. And now Lawrence and company back to work. It's a four for seven start. 30 yards for the sophomore. Yeah, I think he, part of the reason he feels so comfortable is his offensive line has been keeping him clean the last five games. One sack, which I think gives him a lot of confidence. But how about his, his rhythm that he is in right now and typically is in? Pitt covering and man coverage, covering these receivers, especially the outside receivers, pretty well. But he is throwing some very good downfield throws to give those receivers, Ross and Higgins, a chance. They love to keep the backs fresh. And Adam Choice, who comes off a three-touchdown performance against the Gamecocks, is now in the game. And he's got the football as the Panthers clog the middle. Just a yard. Much like... The Michigan State days of Pat Narduzzi, his linebackers don't hesitate. They are coming downhill at the snap of the ball, they, they, and they don't hide that. Uh, they're an aggressive group. That tradition carries on now with, with these linebackers, and Clemson will try to take advantage of that aggressive approach with some play-action passes behind them. Choice in the pistol, but Lawrence fakes it, keeps it. That ball is deflected. Rashad Weaver is an excellent defensive end. He's got great quick quickness. Yeah, he really does. It's 6'5, 260. I think he's, I think maybe one of his best attributes when he can't get to the quarterback is just his athletic ability and timing. I, you know, looking at film this week, you and I both have seen his ability, he can't get to the quarterback, does a good job of getting up into the air and, and knocking it down. And remember, Lawrence is 6'6 six himself. Panthers have bookend defensive ends, Weaver and Dwayne Hendricks. Between them, nine and a half sacks. One of the strengths of this defense. Clemson needs eight on third down. They come after Lawrence. He gets it out. Long throw. Almost intercepted. That was Dane Jackson, the quarter, who jumped in front of Rodgers. Well, that is a long throw from the right hash all the way to the left sideline. And Jones, 91, watch him get in there and get into the face just enough to affect, I think, him being able to follow through and get velocity on that throw because it's such a long throw out to Rodgers. Dane Jackson, who's their best cover corner, almost jumped in front of that. He would have walked to the end zone. Trevor's got a lot of confidence in his arm, but he took a peek over there. I think he knew that that might be trouble. Spires with a high punt. This time he avoids hitting the back of someone on the cover team, and the fair catch is made. Kickoff NFL Week 13 on Sunday NFL Countdown. Tomorrow morning at ESPN, Aaron Rodgers and the former Panther, Larry Fitzgerald, are going to square off. You can hear the story of how their friendship took them to Africa and run, but now Pittsburgh beginning to get their footing on both sides of the ball. Yeah, they had nine plays in 62 yards their last drive, and they got that running game going. They get looking to throw on play action, rolls out, and has to throw it away. And he still got knocked down over there. 
Well, you're, you're seeing what they're trying to do. We, we all know they want to run the inside zone and, and run the ball with these talented backs in this offensive line. But you have to do something to complement that and, and make Clemson not just load up against that run. And their, their ideas are jet sweep, getting the ball around, and then play action bootlegs and nakeds to try to get the athletic picket on the corner and try to keep Clemson respecting the edge of this offense and how they're attacking. It's a rough start, Kirk, for Pickett. One of six. That was a completion for a loss of four yards to Hall. Here's a second down handoff to Hall. And it'll be another third and long. Wilkins involved in the tackle. When you go up against this kind of attack for Wilkins, it's not just about the flash plays, you know, being able to penetrate, get in the backfield, and rush the quarterback. Tonight, it's about trying to eat up two linemen at a time and freeing up the linebackers to be able to allow them to make plays against this run. Wilkins playing in his 57th game at Clemson. That ties the school record. Along with Chad Deal, a fullback who played 07 to 11. To get to the championship game, he could play in 59 college games. Final seconds of the first quarter and third and nine. Pickett flushed again. He's a good runner. Can he get there? Takes a shot. Knocked out by Terrell, but they do move the sticks, and that gets the Panther bench fired up. Boy, that, that is a heck of an effort. Trey Lamar came through on the blitz up the middle. He's trying as hard as he can. He picks up a block there behind him, and then a major collision. Except for the second quarter, comes in up 14-3. The 2018 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game. After the conversion by Pickett, Panthers on the march. And there's the speedy Carter we yep. talked about. Does anybody in college football use the jet sweep more than they do? No, no, no. And, and, and I think one thing that's great about it, and here's a, here's a physical hit. And you brought up a good question at the break about with Dave Kataya about targeting. Has it ever called on the offense? Yeah, Dave, doesn't the rule allow for it? You never see it call, but it's Pickett who delivers the helmet-to-helmet -helmet blow there. I've never seen it call, but the runner's under the same restrictions as anybody else. But he's more lowering his head to protect himself rather than launching. Very right, difficult right. to be called on the runner. You're not advocating a flag there. You, you, you just Absolutely. was targeting initiated by the quarterback. And after that gain, it's second and one. This is more like it for Pittsburgh. And a whistle. Oh, they got the look like the left side of the offense. Maybe the fullback 35 Ball moved. Start, start. Offense number 35, five yard penalty. Second down. That's a good spot. That's George Aston, the athletic fullback, converted linebacker out of oh. Iowa. Basically, if you want to follow the football when Pittsburgh runs the ball, follow 35 because he's typically going to lead you to the ball because he's going to pick up somebody and block him. Yeah, he's out of Virginia actually, but. He's a huge part of the running game. He got actually caught a couple touchdown passes against Clemson in that big center two years ago. So he's an occasional receiver as well. But the five-yard penalty makes it second and six. Another miscue for this pit's off, pit offense. And they overcome it. Pickett rolls and delivers. And that's a catch made by Carter in heavy traffic covered by Simmons. It'll be third and four. That's a heck of an effort for a two-yard gain. I mean, that, that was almost picked by Simmons. Ball is thrown behind. Levin gets his hands on it. Pretty good concentration there by Carter to somehow bring that in. You mentioned Simmons' name a couple times. He had a very rough game against South Carolina. He was one of the guys who felt responsible for allowing those big plays. He looks inspired tonight, Kirk. Yeah, he sure does. And again, you, you can imagine the week of practice they had and how anxious they've been to get back out here. Need four. Pickett steps up. Can he escape? And the gap closed down quickly. Cleland Farrell and Wilkins corral him. It's fourth down. You know, Austin Bryant, you think of it as a pass rusher. He's showing it, and then he drops kind of a zone pressure look where they drop the defensive end. What I like is they have eyes on the quarterback for the potential scramble. Three different guys. Farrell's there. Bryant's there. So they drop their ends, bring the two inside linebackers. Again, a different wrinkle for that pit offense there on third down to affect their pass protection. What do you think, Kirk? Narduzzi choosing to punt from the Clemson 44. Christodulo almost dropped the snap. Able to get it away. And it's going to pay off. I think it's a good call. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see if they can force a punt from down there. It's a retire. 
And they are looking at candidates, which perhaps include a couple of Clemson coordinators, Tony Elliott and Brent Venables. Tigers from inside the one. Give it to ETN. And ETN, who averaged you know, about 38 yards in his first two carries, muscles out across the five. Clemson trying to get that rhythm back that they had in the first couple possessions when things were happening so easy for them. A couple touchdowns, and then they've had a, a couple punts in their last two possessions. Good way to start there. Pin back deep inside the one with a nice gain there on first down. ETN again, not down. You see Davo Sweeney with the play chart. I'll tell you, he does get involved in the play clause along with Elliott and Jeff Scott. is also a fine offensive mind, but Davo, not a CEO in that respect. He's involved in the play calling. Yeah, ETN looks like he's coming off a little gingerly there after that last run there on the sideline. You're right. Davo's hands-on with it with the offense, and he's had coordinators come and go, and Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott doing such a great job after Chad Morris left to take a head job at SMU, of course, now at Arkansas. Feaster replacing ETN on third and five. Lawrence from the end zone. Lofts it downfield for Ross over the head. He's looking for a flag against Pinnock. There isn't one. I like that they're letting him play. You know, I, I have no problem with it at all. I know if you're a Clemson fan, you're not going to like how physical this is, but I, I have no issue at all. Pinnock doing his best to look back for the football and pushing back and forth. And Dabo, of course, wants to call. So the decision by Narduzzi not to go for it inside the Clemson 40 punts it down there. Looks like a pretty smart one as Spires will be backed up against the end line for this punt. And Arujo Lopes is set up in Clemson territory to receive the punt. Another three and out for this high-powered offense after two quick scores. Low snap. Spires feels it on the bounce. Does a great job to avoid a safety. It's a low boot that's going to roll dead at about the 39, but that could have been big trouble on a sloppy night. Yeah, they, they've had some issues with their punt game tonight. This time it's the snap. Spires one time just mishit it. This time does a nice job on the short hop, almost like a, a shortstop. His dad is a great baseball player. Yeah, Spires. You can tell he worked on it when he was younger because he, he does a really good job of staying down on the ball. Not putting the knee down. And then not panicking. He's able to get that ball off. But Pitt does get the ball in plus territory right about at the 39-yard line to start this drive. What looked like maybe a blowout early, and all of a sudden Pitt is settled into the game. They've been on the ropes from the opening play, but a chance to cut into this lead here. Almost feels like they need to. Carter on the end around looking for blocks, but the young guy knocked down by Lamar after about a three-yard gain. Again, I, I'd really like to see this a big part of this offense, and it's get some three yards here, but it makes the safeties and the linebackers have their eyes on the possible threat of that jet sweep. And all of a sudden, you start to fake it, and you give it up the middle. That's how they try to offset their, their offense and try to slow defenses from just loading up against Olison and, and Hall. It's Olison in the eye formation. He's got it. Again, has to sidestep quick penetration in the backfield. That was Kendall Joseph and a short game. And yeah, when you can't throw the football consistently, they're 120th in the nation in passing offense. When you can't make people pay for loading up against your running game, you got to find other ways to try to make them pay for it. And, and for this offense, that's where the jet sweep and quick bootlegs try to complement that run game. It's a big third down. Panthers just two for seven. Pickett delivers a low throw. Arujo Lopes makes the catch. It's right near the marker, but it's enough for a first down. Yep, third and six. Arujo Lopes does a good job with a soft coverage there by Muse. He was lined up about eight yards off the ball. Pickett saw that before the ball was snapped located it, threw it down away from T T Tanner Muse and gave the receiver a chance to make that play. Arujo Lopes is the old man in the receiver's room, the only senior, leader, graduate, excellent student. Made a clutch catch there. Olison 
Gets to the edge. Stiff arm against Simmons. Down the sidelines. Dives. Where will they mark him? No signal yet. Touchdown. They finally say he got in. And the Panthers strike back. You talked about how Isaiah Simmons didn't have a great game. Watch him come out here and try to make this play one-on-one. -on -one. Gets the stiff arm. There's the physical part of Olison. And then, it, boy, it looked like he may have stepped out of bounds there. But the receivers do a good job blocking downfield. They're going to definitely take a peek at that. And there he is. He's, he's out of bounds there. He is under further review. Yeah, no question about it. Got close with that step, and then that one clearly out of about the two-yard line. But o Olison gives you an example there of how physical of a runner he is. Stiff arm gets him down the sideline. The progressive pylon cam shows him step out of bounds just short of the goal line. But Pitt starting to get their style of offense going here. Clearly out. These, they're marching right toward the band, which is up. The student section's going crazy. Let's face it. You come in here as a four-touchdown underdog. ETN with a lightning strike of the opening play. You're down 14 nothing like that, and they have clawed back in. Now, got to punch it in here. When they spot the ball, it'll be at the, about the two-yard line. But this is impressive. This is a resilient team. They've been like that all year. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people saw their, their game last week against Miami and thought, oh, my gosh, they're 7-5. and five. They're going in to play Clemson. They, I was one I, of them. I, 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 well, of course. I, I think a lot of people review, thought that. The runner stepped out of bounds at the two-yard line. First and goal from the two. But I, I, I think... When you get close to the program the way we have this week, you understand that this team's been doubted all year, and it kind of plays to their mantra. They're, they're a blue-collar bunch. They they like to feel disrespected, and, you know, this is a big, big series to see if they can get the points up on the board. You get it to four points, you start to all of a sudden come to the sidelines, and you start to believe. This will be a good battle here. Clemson's defensive front, you know about them. Olison is a very tough back to stop and shoot yardage but it's Hall who's in it's Hall who's got it and a flag is down again at the line of scrimmage that's about the last thing the Panthers need I think Clemson has 12 or 13 players on the Illegal field substitution defense I mean, they Half the distance to the goal. They had a lot First of down. guys running on and off the field. And, and then, of course, Dabo's frustrated with Brent Venables about communication. Look at all the different bodies. And, and they're still, look, look, look how many guys are. He's, Trayvon Mullins counting. He's trying to figure out how many are out here. He's, he's running off of the, off of the field. But if you can have 12 or 13, it makes for a much more effective goal line defense. <laughs> yeah. But that's frustration right there. First and goal. It's Shane Roy as a defensive lineman. He's mingling around in there. All of a sudden, he is tough to stop down there. But the Tigers stand him up. That was a strong tackle by Tanner Muse. Tanner Muse led the way there. Dexter Lawrence came around, helped out. As you said, Chris, this is a tough defense down inside the, near the goal line to try to punch it in between the tackles. Tanner Muse, there's big Dexter Lawrence helping out. J.D. Davis. That ball is on the six-inch line. Olison goes 225, and I think he runs even bigger than that. And you put a 240-pound fullback in front of him. Dives airborne for the touchdown. Let's take another look at the aggressive pylon came. He didn't have the football now, but he appeared to break the plane. Watch 35 lead the way. Always does. Boom. Great block right there. Gives him enough room to go up into the air. Breaks the plane. The progressive pylon cam shows that he is into the end zone. That's a big fella getting up in the air going over Dexter, uh, going over Christian Wilkins there. Olison, 11th rushing touchdown. The senior at Niagara Falls. Very interesting guy. We'll talk more about him. He's a guy of deep faith. A wise soul for someone his age and a heck of a running back Kessman and the Panther Dabo Swinney a word with Trevor Lawrence Pittsburgh showing good resolve and the Tigers offense is stagnant after the two ETN touchdown runs Lawrence has missed five passes in a row and the Tigers have yet to convert on third down tonight Kurt 0 for 4 as you said, there's a spark and some emotion from this Panther team. Olison, who lost his brother, he was shot 
dead in the middle of last season, Maria. And I thought in a letter he shared with us, his response to that was just extraordinary. Well, you're right, Chris, and Quadri found out about his brother's death, and his brother, Leron Harris, was one of his best friends. He always wanted to be just like him, but he said his family has closure coming into this season, and that's been important. Sure was, and now ETN breaks free. As he again is sparking this Clemson offense, he's deep into Pittsburgh territory. His second huge run, Hamlin drove him out. If you go back in the backfield, he's tackled. He's tackled by Idowu. 23 has him, 44 Reynolds, he's wrapped up. This is the difference with ETN this year. He's able to pull out of those tackles and able to get away downfield with that speed. But it started with the physicality where two guys had him for a, for a short loss. So there's a Panther down, that's the corner there, Pinnock. So Maria circling back to that Olison story. I know you were, you were quite taken you know, by him as a young man as well. Yeah, because he went back and forth on whether or not he would even write a letter. Um, but he writes all the time. He's a little bit of a poet, and he likes to express himself through words. And he says that's kind of how he got through losing his brother. I mean, Laurent meant everything to him. He still writes on his cleats a message to his brother every single game. He'll write his hometown on one cleat and the message to his brother on the other. Sometimes it says, fly high, big bro. Uh, and sometimes it says, I'm doing this for you. And at the end of the day, he's a spark for this team. You can recognize it on the sideline when I walk by, but you would never know he's been through the tragedy that he's had to deal with in his young life. So close to his running mate, Darren Hall. They came in a pit together, competing against each other, very supportive of each other. It's a, it's a powerful brotherhood they have. Meanwhile, Clemson's running back has set the Tigers up at the 30. And it's now Feaster in the game, and he's got space. And he's got about seven or eight, still fighting near the marker now. Just want to real quick just go back to what Maria was just talking about with Olison. I, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of a young man at his age have that kind of maturity, uh, that kind of strength to be able to send that kind of message to somebody who took his own brother's life. That, that's. It's a great, uh, a great statement on uh, what kind of person he is. As you said, his deep faith is a, is a big reason for that. Slamming forward for a first down is ETN. Especially in the society we live in today, everybody seems to be divided and being separated. And what a, what a, uh, just a light in the in the middle of a lot of darkness. Love to hear that. Yeah, well said. Driving rain now as the Tigers drive, trying to extend this lead. And Lawrence, after a delay, hands off to ETN. Breaks more tackles. Wow. I'm telling you, man, he, he is such a different back. I mean, the last year it was more about he burst onto the scene as a freshman and he was he was fast, and we all marveled at this young guy out of Louisiana. Man, he spent some time in that weight room. His lower body allows him to run through those arm tackles, and we already saw the big run earlier on this drive, and this one also, instead of a, a short loss, they're, they're in second and seven. Feaster. Knocked down inside the 10. ETN being looked at over there. They're stretching that leg out. He's run it seven times for 135 yards, averaging more than 19 for carry so far. Dabo loves the philosophy of rotating carries, keeping guys fresh, keeping them hungry, keeping them practicing hard. Feaster behind the quarterback on third and three. And it's first and goal. How about that. I mean, an embarrassment of riches. ETN checks out. Tavian Feaster comes in. They have Adam Choice. Feaster showing you that he can run and lower his pads on a crucial third down and short. Now Clemson cranking up a little bit of tempo. They bring in Choice, the 220-pounder, the only senior among the running backs. Lawrence, end zone, caught. Touchdown, T. Higgins went up, got the ball, and they say got the foot down. Let's make sure. 6-4. One on one, they've been tight coverage this entire drive. Gotta love that he, oh yeah, nice job with the left foot getting down, has possession of the football, goes over Pinnock, 
And we've been seeing that connection all year long from the freshman Lawrence. They get down to the red zone. They love to throw the football to T. Higgins when he's matched up one on one. And the progressive pylon cam shows he catches it and gets the left foot down. Ninth touchdown reception for the leading receiver in this crew. Only one football. And so much talent to spread around. Hugo makes it an 11 point Clemson lead. Saturday night. <laughs> French with a chance. And that's good coverage. Hits Simmons down there, slamming him down short of the 20 yard line. Take a break. Pittsburgh back to work, but again down 11. <laughs> that's weak. You got to throw the football properly? Yes. Okay. They should, they, uh, that's, that's a bad look. They should force him. Hey, 100 grand, however, it, however, however, it I don't care what. <laughs> hey, Pittsburgh somehow is clawed back in this. They're still singing Sweet Caroline, but the Panthers offense ready to go to work here when from it, the when, 19. When in doubt, Sweet Caroline. It's a keeper, first of the night, as Pickett falls forward for two. Pickett, uh, athletic, quarterback, 6'2", 220. Part of his background is that you see the players kind of jawing back and forth. Austin Bryant talking to the pit offensive lineman. But Pickett is not, you're right, Chris, we've not seen him run the ball tonight at all. I thought we might see a little bit more of that part of their plan. He had to scramble for a first down, but yeah. there's a design runs. Yeah, you're right. Second keeper, and Farrell was there quickly. It'll be third and long. He's reading clean Farrell here, and he misreads this. Right here, I think he felt that he was going out, but he actually comes down. Watch the body language in 99. Looks like he gives him a little bit of an outside look, which made him pull the ball, and then by keeping it, Farrell's there to make the play. By the way, Clemson had both guys taken. Simmons had the, had the back, and Farrell had the quarterback. That play had no chance. Leland says not tonight ACC defensive player of the year got the vote over his buddy Wilkins third and eight Pickett moves the pocket tries to get the edge and fires low and incomplete it was French on a crossing route fourth down and yeah, not surprising they move him out Move the launch point on, on third down and long. Problem is when you move out like that, obviously you're condensing your options in the field to half the field and you don't have very many receivers out there. Made it easy for Clemson to take the receivers out. And Clemson three minutes and 23 seconds to work with before halftime to try to add to this lead. Mr. Dulo just needs to focus on handling this snap in the wet conditions and getting the punt off. That's a good kick. And no fair catch. Rodgers driven back, slung down. A flag, a couple of them coming in. There's a skirmish. Two flag, and now some tempers flaring, and there's a scuffle breaking out near midfield. That's Olison who's involved in the punt coverage team, getting into it with... I believe it was Kayvon Wallace for the Tigers. A couple of flags to sort out. During the Jeff Heiser. Receiving team number 10. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So it was two different flags in different parts of the field for the same penalty. Well, Clemson came out and with the electric start, Travis Etienne, they got the football first as Pitt elected to defer an E game. And right now it's it's been all about them trying to run the ball with the jet sweep and the inside power run game. Rick, we got 40 total passing yards in the game because Lawrence has just 35 of them, but the running game has been strong. This is choice barreling forward. I, and I really think that's the difference this year with Clemson. I mean, in, in the last few years, they've needed to be able to throw the football, and I think they're better up front with the offensive line. I think they're better with the running backs. And I also think because Lawrence can throw the ball downfield, has that threat, I think their running game is something they can really rely on. They rely on it again, and choice. Heavy traffic falls forward. 
Hunter Renfro doesn't have a catch tonight. He's had one in 40 consecutive games. Higgins has just the one catch. They'll eventually get to the pass game just when you think, boy, what's going on here? They only have 35 yards passing. Blink of an eye, they hit some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and just like that, they'll hit a 75- and 80-yard touchdown. And Pitt, they play tight coverage. They leave corners on islands, and it's a lot of 50-50 balls out there. Runs on the last possession, finally got their first third down conversion. One of five, needing two, and ETN will get it easily down near the 30. They pick up this first down on third down, and because it's been so run heavy, they get a new set of downs. This is where I think you might see Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott try to find a one-on-one a one -on -one matchup. They're going to go trips here to the bottom with these three receivers. ETN, that time the Panthers smother him. Minute 43 and counting before the Capital One halftime report. Kevin Nagandi, Jonathan Vilma, and Jim Mora. They'll have scores and highlights. Our buddy Mac Brown, a part of that show for so long, we congratulate him as he returns to North Carolina yep. as the new head coach. Yeah, wish him the best of luck. Big opportunity for him to go back to Chapel Hill and welcome Jim Mora into the studio. Doing a great job this year coming off of coaching and into TV. And it's Higgins who can't come up with it. Pinnock, it's been a good battle on the edge, but T feels like he should have had that one. Yeah, and, and this is a good matchup just because it's one on one, and Pinnock does a good job. I mean, there's a big height advantage there with Higgins, but Pinnock gets up, and you saw the left hand get around without interfering Higgins and knock the ball away. These two starting corners have sometimes been picked on, Kirk. They've. Allowed seven touchdowns between them, only had two interceptions. They've held up well tonight. Sure have. Choice is the back on third and nine. Panthers only rush three. And Lawrence delivers a strike on the sideline. That's Trevion Thompson, but he's not going to get first down yardage. He's short by about a yard and a half. Good job by Thompson working in the scramble, working back to his quarterback. The problem is a little bit more awareness on where the first down marker is. So as he's working back, he has to have an idea of where he's trying to get, and he has to at least be at that first down marker, especially catching the ball right next to the sideline and going out of bounds. So Spires is on. Last punt snap was short hopped in the end zone. He's averaging just 28.3 at a 15-yard punt. He had one go off the back of one of the long snapper earlier, so it's not been automatic for the punting game here. And the Panthers are going to get the ball to start the second half. they got a minute 11 and one timeout to work I with. I was Kirk. just going to say, depending on what their strategy is here at the end of this half, it's not like they have a big a shot. You know, maybe, maybe it's decent starting field position. Again, they don't have a great passing game. That's a nice team to a SEC championship and that number one spot more than likely, oh, obviously, in the in the playoff. Saban saying in his postgame comments, Kirk, the Tug of Baloa's injury is not apparently serious. It's an ankle sprain. That's good news. Should be okay for the playoff. Pickett scrambling. No dive. Or no slide, I should say, a dive for a first down across the 30. He kind of set the defense up to make them think it looked like he was going to go down. And it looked like the safety, Nolan Turner, thought he was just going to slide. And he ended up going right around him. Stopped the clock with a first down. You mentioned they just had that one timeout because they had to spend one. And now it's batted in the air and it falls to the turf. Dangerous. I'm telling you, you got it. You got to be careful, especially with just that one timeout. This defense thrives on getting their hands up and putting pressure on a quarterback. And Pickett is still growing in confidence and sitting in that pocket and throwing. The ball gets tipped like that. It's very easily intercepted. Well, Pickett has gone 142 pass attempts without an interception. Has not thrown one since the first half of the Syracuse game. That's, that's half a season. Well, it gets your point. It's a, it's a dangerous play, and we'll see how adventurous they get now with 44 seconds to go until half. And that's a downfield shot. Again, the receiver, either the slip or break the route off. That was Mack. It was the same thing we saw in the first quarter, where, where you, the quarterback thought he read the coverage and a route adjustment with tight coverage. He's going to continue downfield on a fade, and instead, Mack pulls back, thinking he can run kind of a, an underneath route on a, on a hitch. 
Second time in this uh, first half we've seen Pickett and Mack not quite on the same page. So I got about a pass defense that gave up more than 500 yards last week to South Carolina. Pittsburgh has five. Three for 11 now for Pickett. On third and ten. In traffic, and it's going to be picked off by Terrell. Terrell looking for the sideline and knocked out inside the 10. There is the first pick in half a season, and it's costly. Just said that you have a quarterback in Pickett who's still growing and trying to get comfortable from the pocket against this defense that likes to confuse a quarterback. You can almost feel how uncomfortable he was sitting in that pocket, unsure of his read, and just simply throwing it out into the flat where Terrell ends up making the play. That ball's floating out there. I'm just surprised Pitt decided to, to, I like him being aggressive, but sitting in the pocket, making reads, and throwing the football against this defense is a tough thing to do for even a seasoned quarterback. Those two have had a couple collisions tonight. Remember earlier on the run, and it was eight versus eight collision. They could help it on the tackle. Talk to him yesterday, Kirk. He, he is a little bit risk averse. He talks about being a game manager, making the smart choices, not hurting his team. He thought he might have to take some more risks tonight. That one did not pay off. Now the Tigers trying to add to the lead. Lawrence for the end zone, just like that. They make the Panthers pay. Higgins for the second time tonight. I put the little the little marker on Higgins because if I'm a quarterback and I got 29 seconds to go and I see one-on-one -on -one coverage with my guy, I'm going to go to it all day. Nice job of reading it. It's an RPO. The safety came up and made it an easy throw for Trevor Lawrence to T. Higgins. So Higgins, two catches, both touchdowns. And that is a devastating blow for a Panther team that quickly fell down 14, got back within four, but the turnover sets up the touchdown and the lead is 18. Uh, this is the read right here. It's a little blurry because of the conditions, but that's who he's looking at. Once he comes up here, that's going to tell him he's got the slant behind it. You see it all the time in college football. Defenses are put in a tough spot. They're kind of in conflict. Do you come up against the run look? quarterback could pull the ball out and throw it or do you sit back and let him run the ball here the defender said I'm coming up against this great running game Lawrence felt it read it you can see his eyes on the defender and then makes the simple throw to T Higgins nice and high where he can make the play 14 points off the two Pittsburgh turnovers Tigers have had three one play touchdown drives <laughs> two short one long all because Pitt got aggressive. You suggested it might be the prudent thing after that one pass was tipped at the line. Uh, that's good. Uh, just run the ball, go to halftime. Or roll out. Run the ball or roll out. I, I didn't like him sitting in that pocket. Line drive kick is fielded by French. Knocked down across the 25, 18 seconds left. Let's take a look at the college football playoff rankings brought to you by 18 potentially two one loss conference champions of Right, I, Ohio I, guess, State. I guess I don't get caught up in champions. I get caught up in best the best four I don't really follow the rest of that stuff. We'll have a chance I suspect after halftime to continue this conversation I think we will flesh out those opinions. Yeah as Clemson scores very early and very late in this half and leads by 18 closing in on the fourth consecutive East. they want to get back on track before they get ready for the postseason good point Pittsburgh generating 122 total yards but again just five through the air as Kenny Pickett is three for 12 that interception free streak ended after 145 passes B.T. Potter is a strong-legged freshman. They have depth at kicker as well. He's going to be the, the field goal guy next season. For now, he's just a really good kick. Tony, he feels like his own story is kind of emblematic of pit football. Kind of doubted, overlooked a lot. Not a big recruit out of Jersey. But 
happy to do his job, not caring about stats, very happy when he defers to the running game. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Ouch. Clock not even running, and the play clock winds down and sets Pittsburgh back five more. Yeah. Pat Narduzzi fired up. It's the last thing again. It, it, some of these miscues in that first half, he's actually upset with the officials. Maybe they started that play clock a little bit too early. In fact, tried to get a timeout. They're going to have to use their first timeout. So there's not a delay there. They're not trying. They should be. <laughs> there's no trying. Phone blowing up over here. <laughs> Parker tries to pick his way. Well, you hesitate against Clemson, and the, the posse will come calling quickly. No doubt about it. And then, you know, they can run. They can get sideline to sideline. But Pitt has to get that ball on the edge. Has to have some success running to the outside to make that de the defensive backs the the edge of the defense have to respect that. It's a big part of what they do. But Pat Narduzzi was fired up after having to use a timeout to get this second half started. Timeout saves the five yards and kept them ahead of the sticks. And now Pickett, the keeper, he's going to be slung down, smashed down hard by Lamar right at the line of scrimmage. Defense is flying around. He's reading Furl 99. See him come down, so he pulls it. But Dexter Lawrence is right there. Trey Lamar, and they, they read that perfectly and in position. So they intentionally gave him a read to keep it, to get the ball out of the running back's hands, and then the twist with Lawrence and the linebackers, they knew that Pickett would have the ball, and they were there to rally. Need four on third down. Tigers bring a blitz, and they got Pickett back at the 20. It's Trey Lamar from his linebacker position, fourth down. Now they get aggressive all the time on third down. That's just who they are. They actually brought both their linebackers, Joseph, and here's Lamar who ends up putting the pressure on Pickett. You got three down linemen and a bear look, meaning they cover the guard, both guards in the center. And because they were occupied, it freed up Trey Lamar, who gets home on that blitz. Sat out last week with an ankle injury. Probably could have gone, but a smart move to rest him up, and he looks fresh tonight. Butkus Award finalist makes the sack that kills the drive. It's to Dulu on the bounce. It's Rodgers at the 36. Back down at the 38. So Trevor Lawrence, modest stats by the standards of this high-powered offense. Seven completions for 52 yards. The two touchdowns came to T. Higgins. It wouldn't surprise me at all to, to see them, even with the 18-point lead, give Trevor Lawrence and, and this offense a chance to stretch this Pitt defense out a little bit. Keep in mind, I don't blame them for running. Pitt, as aggressive as they are, they're 120th in the nation at giving up runs of 20 yards or more. So they've had a, a few busts over the year, and it's something that they've tried to do is, is run tonight. But I think they'll throw it more. ETN. Makes that quick cut and gets eight. I'll make you a little gentleman's side bet that Hunter Renfro gets involved. He doesn't yeah, have a catch yet. He's trying to continue that streak to, to 41 games that he's played in. And in his 45th start. The only reason I think they'll throw more is just you, you want to you be balanced and you want to... Is, is this... Looks like it was the Tigers who flinched that time. Snap and fraction offense. Number 50, five-yard penalty, second down. Austin Austin Nelly, one of the yeah. graduates sure. on this team. I, I just think that he, I think Dabo, because his experience in the postseason, he, he likes to be able to go into the postseason with momentum, you know, not just running the ball, but having a balanced attack. And there's Renfro making his first catch of the night and extending the streak, but it's for a loss as he was hit hard. A mere watch, the defensive tackle knocked yeah. down the slot receiver. W Watts actually, I think he's, he's in the inside, but he just felt the line working their way out on a screen and just followed him. The line, Pollard 76, that's who he was up against, and because he worked his way to the outside, just anticipated the ball coming out quickly, and the big fella at 290 has some athletic ability, makes the play. Renfro's tough, but he's given away 110 pounds in that collision. Third and 13.
Pressure again. Picked up. Lawrence delivers. But again, miscommunication with Higgins, who was streaking down the field. Offensive, down. offensive line did a pretty good job there. I think the ball might have been tipped, you know, at the line of scrimmage where they got some pressure and it looked like they jumped up, tried to get a hand on the ball. But they did a good job. Pitt was in kind of that rat defense where they're just kind of walking around. And Pine gets up. Let's see if he can. Nope, he just missed it. Just missed it. And Spires just kicks the ball with heavy backers from the 31. And a first on handoff. And Hall oh, busts free and across the 45. Dentino in the middle, the center, right guard does a good job. Herndon getting up to the linebacker. That's pit football right there. Worked the double team, able to get up to the linebackers with the center and the guard, and that gives the, the running back Hall much more room to work with. There's been a few times where we've seen them be able to control the line of scrimmage. Hall from Youngstown, Ohio. That's where Narduzzi's background is. You make him tough there. Got it again. That's the sidestep and spin. That's a terrific run. Not a massive game, but he showed the skills to twice avoid a loss. Boy, Austin Bryant was right there. I mean, right there. And this is what great backs do. Look at the top seven in white, right at the edge, holding the edge. He makes Furl miss, and then Bryant on the other side miss with a spin move. I mean, that, that is a great run here by a Hall. A little bit more elusive than the powerful Olison. I think Dabo saw what I saw. Both those ends had a chance to make a play on him, but they're playing against good backs tonight. Yes, yeah, sometimes running back just makes a good move. Yeah. And on the second three, it's Olison, and he's going to be knocked down right near the marker. You know, Olison and Hall both kind of began their career in the shadow of James Conner. Then when Conner had his health issues and left, they both got a chance to shine. Conner comes back, pushed them back into the background, and these two guys benefit, Kirk, from the fact that the Steelers are right across the hall. And James Conner yep. having a great That's year for the Panthers point. are both around these guys as a mentor. It continues. Yeah, J James Conner has such a great approach to his job, not only when he's, uh, of course, now playing with the Steelers, but he, he was in college and everything he had to overcome, and I'm sure these players have a great appreciation for him and his journey. What a great example for them to follow. Had a great year, and he continues to be a big Pittsburgh fan, no doubt looking in tonight. Olison, that time grabbed behind the line, or Hall, is just by Wilkins. Well, this is where this defensive line can, can really take over. Christian Wilkins is right here, and they shoot gaps as well as anybody. And it's a tight gap. You can see how, because of the quickness, Dentino, the center, you know, he tried his best to get over there. But Wilkins, who takes the headbutt from his his man, Furl, those guys love to challenge one another. But, man, Wilkins at 305, 315 pounds with that kind of cat-like quickness is tough. Carter, and they're all over the jet sweeps now. That's a frequently used and productive play, but... Tanner Muse, the safety, and Bryant from his end position. Yep, and, and I think you also have to give uh, Trayvon Mullen credit for getting to the outside, occupying the big heavy blocker, George Aston, the fullback, and that freed up the rest of the safeties and the speed of that defense to just clean it up. Nowhere to go that time on the jet sweep. Carter has run that jet sweep five times, gained a total of 18 yards. Olison is out, Hall in on third and 11. Let's see what Brent Venables dials up here. And they make a play in the pass game. Now he brought the pressure and Pickett scrambling. He'll take off. And no slide. Able to get down three yards short of the marker. Wallace stopped him. Fourth down, you'd figure the offense stays out there. Yeah, I mean, he's able to somehow escape. Those two linebackers came right up the middle. They shoot him kind of a cross blitz here where they occupy the center. Hall tried to come up on Joseph. I thought I was surprised that he got away from Furl. Gave himself at least a chance here now on fourth down instead of having to punt it. And to have a chance to claw back in the game down 18. An important play midway third quarter. Got to hurry. 
Pickett rolls and throws. A flag is down, complete to Arujo Lopes. Playing right at the line of scrimmage on the far side. Might be offensive pass interference. The pick. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about calling it a rub because I, I like to see the offense catch the break, but it looked like Mac 11 was just blocking downfield. See 11. Shift. Offense. Watch him here. Two players in motion. Five yard penalty. I got to get him on a shift, but in my opinion, Mac, it, you know, you have to hide it a little bit. But they didn't, they didn't call that at all. It was on the illegal shift, thinking pit punt. Yeah, that stings because the penalty makes it too much of a gamble, apparently, for Narduzzi at this point from the 42-yard line. So down 18. As much as he hates to, Narduzzi choosing to send Christodoulou the punter out, see if he can again pin the Tigers back. Well, that's very short. It's not going to pin him back unless he gets it on the field. And the build an 18 point lead. ETN working on a potential 200 yard game tonight. They fake it to him and flip it short to Trevion Thompson, who's tackled right away by Hamlin. I, I think. I think Thompson, even though you have Renfro and Higgins and Ross and Namari Rogers, even Kendrick, he's kind of a forgotten receiver in this offense. He is more than capable as, as they get ready for the playoff of making plays and kind of being a, a great complement to some of the more high profile receivers. Ever seen a game, Kirk? We're, we're deep in the third quarter. The yards after catch combined for both teams is 15. Clemson has only 14 yards after the catch. Pit one, one. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we have five yards passing for Pitt, and we have 56 yards passing for, for Clemson. Yeah, 2018. In Charlotte, with the rain. Third and three. That's the power of Clemson's offense, though. If the passing game isn't firing, isn't clicking, they need a couple touchdowns, of course, but running game is good enough to carry him against a lot of people. Lawrence has time and delivers to Renfro. Takes a shot. Man, that's right at the marker. Hamlin came up. No yards after that catch. That's a big hit. That's where you clean it up. The junior, Hamlin, who has experience at corner, in fact, played corner back as a freshman against his Clemson team in Death Valley, but he's moved back to safety, leads the team in tackles, has a great feel, and there he just lowered his shoulder right into Hunter Renfro as soon as he caught the ball. But he did, did pick up that first down. It looks like... Yeah, they're both feeling it. Renfro came back against South Carolina after leaving the Duke game, got knocked in the head, but was good to go the next week. Has not played a lot tonight. That was just his second catch and actually has negative yards. Bob told a story this week that she's told before, but Suzanne was uh, uh, rolling and she it downfield over the head of Rodgers. This pit defense, I mean, and I know you could say the conditions, it's it's wet, the, the, the field's slippery, you say whatever you want, but Trevor Lawrence, this is this is this defense has done a good job at managing the speed of Clemson in their pass game. Trevor's 10 of 20 for 59 yards, and they've not been able to get behind them consistently at all tonight. ETN dragged down nicely by Elias Reynolds, the middle linebacker. He had to step in. They lost linebacker Quinton Virginis before the Notre Dame game. He was their leader back there. They, they lost their center. This team has had to be resilient because key injuries on both sides of the ball yep. in the, right in the middle of the season. Yeah, Virginis was a big one, and Reynolds has had to step into that Mike linebacker position. And in this particular defense, that's everything. There he is still being a leader there on the sideline, but out for the year. The Notre Dame game, the first that he missed, was a loss, but it was a turning point for this team. They gained confidence in battling the Irish right down to the end. Lawrence has a lot of room, and he shows his athletic ability. Dodges a tackler at six foot six. He can scoop, but he can also make guys miss. 
Boy, he can cover a lot of ground at 6'6". And once he builds up his speed, he's really a threat. And I think he, this is where he's really developed, is understanding when the, the, the primary receiver's not there, the second option's not there. Instead of waiting and waiting, he's such a good athlete, you got to take off. Dane Jackson just kind of dove and threw his shoulder but you're talking about an incredibly athletic and savvy runner in Trevor Lawrence and picks up that first down. Yeah, he got 16 yards at his best running game against the Gamecocks last week. He wanted to go downfield, but then he's just going to run out of time and get swarmed. Great cover. First time. Yep, great coverage downfield. That's what allowed Pitt to be able to get there with Hendricks. That pocket just kind of collapsed on him. Weaver on one side, Hendricks on the other. See 17 right there. And on the other side, eight. Both those defensive ends did a good job along with the inside of getting a push. Looks like Twyman, 55, was in there as well. But it, really all the credit downfield with nowhere to go uh, with the football for Trevor Lawrence. ETN accelerates and then spins for a nice gain. It'll set up third and long by nine. Grab us a guy that doesn't seek the spotlight. He's very comfortable in his role here. Some backs would would want the rock a lot more. Very unselfish. Look at the defense just moving around, trying to affect the communication. See him pointing? No hands on the ground at all. And Lawrence throws it up, oh, wow. and that battle is won by Pinnock. He broke it up. Working against Ross. Well, I, I'm really enjoying watching Pinnock tonight. 15 on one side. Dane Jackson known as a better cover corner. But Pinnock does a good job, again, anticipating on third down at about eight that that ball is going to come out at about 10 yards, 12 yards. So he gets his head turned looking for the football, and that's what allows him to fight back through the receiver. I, I like how you get excited watching corner play because that's exactly how you coach it. Drive your hands straight up through the hands of the receiver. I just love to see corners <laughs> locate the football in college because you don't see it very often. That was textbook. And you're right, he has played a, a nice game. Another low snap. Spires gets it away. Arujo Lopes looking for some room. And he doesn't get the block. A very distinguished list of past recipients. Maybe Dabo can meet him there. Yeah, yeah. Great. I know a lot of people will be fired up to meet him. I, I've had a chance to communicate with him quite a bit since we had a, a chance to get to, to meet him uh, that weekend of Ohio State and Purdue. And he's had so many great moments. Ball start, offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, second down. Man, they make a play, then they set themselves back time and again. That's their best offensive lineman, Millen, guilty of that time. Another reminder to join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. Tyler, by the way, saying he hoped maybe to wear one of Craig Sager's fancy sport coats at that event in Atlanta. This is Carter on the left end for the sixth time in a jet sweep tonight. Short game. You think everybody will be got to a point where they've calmed down after the uh, ranking show tomorrow? You think by the Home Depot show, everybody will be get it out of their system? This depends be a depends lot on of, what happens tomorrow. I think there's going to be a lot of anger no matter what happens, don't you think? No matter, no matter who ends up at five or six. It's college football. Anger, resentment, yep. controversy. Yep. Does it very well. It's a subjective way of evaluating teams, and that's why there's so much angst and excitement. Panthers need six. That penalty hurt their chances here, and that's knocked up in the air. Incomplete. Olison was hammered right as the ball arrived by Xavier Thomas, the freshman, leaving his mark against the tough senior who's slow to get up. Well, he's got the slant, and this is where he's, again, going to have to grow. The slant's there for the first down, and instead of taking it, he doesn't even take the moment to look out to see that there's a defender who had dropped from a defensive end position to go out into the flat to take Olison. He had the slant, 
decided not to throw it, and without even looking, he didn't realize Thomas was out there. Olsen gets knocked down hard, but he's part of the, the punt team. He's the personal protector, so he, for the moment, he's, he's out there. Pass. The play is under further review. Uh, they may look and see if this was a backward pass. You know, at, to the naked eye, Kirk, I, I, it was close to being behind the line. And if it if it is, and Clemson made a, an immediate recovery there, this could be viewed as a turnover. Let's see. And Dave Kataya is here. Dave, to me, that looks right down the line or maybe a few inches forward. How, how do you see that review? Forward to me. Yeah, I, I, it looks it looks a few inches forward. Regardless, there's not enough to change the call on the field. And the ball did, by the way, roll out of bounds. It would still be Pittsburgh football, but it would set them back. I, to me, it's close, but that's a forward pass. Yeah, but they're going to have to let this stand. I, I, there's not enough to reverse what was called on the field. It, it looks forward more than anything. Here's a 360 cam from the overhead look. I misspoke. It, it's a, this is the whole thing is a matter of a few yards of field position anyway. It's going to be fourth down. Pickett's uniform is not clean, Kirk. No. No, it's been one of those nights. You know what? No, he, he, I think he's got a bright future. He's only a sophomore, and you know, he's, he's going to be able to continue to. Like that last play was a great example of where quarterbacks who aren't really comfortable sitting in a pocket, they just don't see certain things. You know, and, and that defensive end, Thomas, dropped, and he never felt it. It was determined it was an incomplete pass. The ball be placed at the 26 and a half yard line. It'll be fourth down. Please reset the game clock. To 106. And again, it's a Pittsburgh team that they didn't have a single first team all CC guy. Thompson had five. Millen, one of his second team guys, committed the penalty in that series. It's just not an offense that against these guys gonna be able to survive the penalties. No, it's, it's hard enough to beat Clemson, let alone you're having these miscues. High boot into the misty evening from Chris Tadulo and Rogers. Catches it right on the sideline. Back to Matt Berry for an update. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess from Indianapolis. Yeah, Chris, we got one brewing in the Big Ten Championship. Clayton Thorson to Cameron Green. And look at this. Northwestern's found their way back in this ball game. 24-21 halfway through the third quarter. Wildcats trying to get to 9-4 and four and perhaps spring an upset and get to the Rose Bowl where Washington would await. Even if Ohio State holds on, Kirk, Many would believe that it was not the emphatic result they needed to come from behind from sixth position to vault over Oklahoma and Georgia. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, it was Oklahoma was the team that everybody thought was in that pole position if if Alabama blew George out, which they did not. On the slant that Higgins almost got free for a third touchdown tackled by Jackson there you see Trevor Lawrence being able to get into a rhythm and lead T Higgins down the field these pick corners are in tight coverage the windows are tight throws have to be right on the money and that time he gives Higgins a chance throwing it out in front of him you suggested they might try to open up the passing game in the latter stages of this this is a keeper for Lawrence who again gets around the edge and deceptively gobbles up about eight yards yeah kind of a, a little bit of a triple option look here where Trevor Lawrence is reading Folston watch 40 come into the picture actually should have given this because Folston looks like he's gonna come down and then he comes back out on the quarterback he starts to look like he wants to throw it out to the outside to Renfro but you can see he's well covered by Hamlin so he decides to just take off and pick up seven or eight yards final play of the third quarter it's a flea flicker and lofting it downfield to a wide open Justin Ross, who's going to be stopped just short of the goal line. Trickery to end the third period. And they brought a corner blitz with Jackson, which meant the safety had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Briggs was late to respond. You see how Ross kind of slow-plated, showed like he was going to block? Briggs fell for it, and then watch him in the background. He goes right behind him, and Lawrence getting all that pressure from the corner blitz puts it up in the air for that nice play. So Clemson on the doorstep when the final period starts. Back after this, be falling backwards when he just flicked that with his wrist. Told you how Briggs kind of got caught up, little flea flicker, safety saw the handoff, came up, and look at this, the pressure 
forced him to just get rid of the ball as quickly as he could. And right, he just fell back because he knew how open he was and had enough to get on the ball to get it out to to get it out to Ross. Choice is the choice on first and goal, and he shows great determination and spotted short, not marked a touchdown yet. Let's double check this. Choice a tough runner on third down and fourth down and short. The only thing I think he can see he must have caught his knee before he got into the end zone. An elbow, maybe. It's very close. It looked like he got in. Did he get in there? Yes. No doubt that time. Choice does his job. And Clemson moves it through the air right to the doorstep for this one-yard run. Nice drive by Clemson. Nice job at throwing the football. They were able to get some big plays, throwing the ball downfield finally to Higgins on that, that nice kind of skinny post. Ross on the flea flicker where he got the ball out, almost came up with a touchdown, and Choice ends up finishing it off to give Clemson a big lead here now in the second half. Talking to Trevor this week, his dad, Jeremy, was his first coach, youth football, and I asked him, when did you notice that you got a talent for, for throwing this darn football. He said, about eighth grade, I, I started to figure out that maybe I could do this better than... That yeah, is. You're right. But Here's we kind of knew that coming into the year. You know, right? Kirk, by the way, next year at this time, covering a kickoff could perhaps be two scrappy walk-ons out of Brentwood, of NBA Academy. Let's go to the huddle tape of Jay Curb Street. He comes up here. Boom, as the corner makes a big hit. Yes, yes. They're tie out. the receiver. Yep. And they're going to be preferred walk-ons for Davos Winnie's Clemson program. Yes. He's, he's seen, I was watching this yesterday. He's already seen him. He's yes. Come up to camp. Right? Yeah, yeah, they came to camp, worked out with uh, the coaches, had a, had a great visit. I've always been blown away by Dabo, the way he runs his program. And uh, when the boys talked about maybe wanting to do that at Clemson, I was 100% behind them and look forward to them being a part of that program. What a, what a, what a unique opportunity for him. He's, he is the CEO, but he's also, as you said, very hands-on. He, he does things very differently. I, you know, I, we all have been all around the country, and he, he walks the walk on how he runs his program. And, and you either follow the rules or you don't. And if you're a, the, you know, Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence, and you don't follow the rules, then you're going to get, you're going to have consequences, and all the way down. So he treats everybody the same, and he has incredible coaches and his staff around him, even the, the secretaries. It's just a great aura around that program. And again, Carter on that jet sweep, and they're beginning to chase him down. That was a big play by Isaiah Simmons. It's a loss. Boy, this defense is flying around. Remember how, again, we keep talking about how they played last week, and they're not going to give up in, until this game is over. And Simmons, in particular, is the one that wants to play well. This, this jet sweep has given them some problems tonight at times, but they've made some adjustments and playing much better against it here in the second half. By the way, Kirk, do you know that today is exactly the 10th anniversary of Dabo's hiring as the permanent head coach, December 1, 2008, barely 39 years old at the time. Just turned 49 a couple of weeks ago. Third and 26. Good luck, Pitt. Olison, <laughs> short gain, and they'll set up the point. And the other thing that they, they do a good job is rotating bodies, not just with a big lead. You'll, you'll see Brent Venables rotating defensive linemen, secondary guys. They, they have a big philosophy, and you can see he, is, he put a lot on them this week. He wanted them to play well, and they've, they've kind of answered that challenge because it's not just about winning the ACC championship in Charlotte. It's about getting that swagger back and that confidence back before they get ready for that next game in the playoffs. Just to do lose punt. You're gonna bounce in front of Rogers, not a bounce. Has the defense ever given up more than 500 yards passing in the first quarter? Pittsburgh battled back 14-10. But three straight touchdowns for the Tigers. And they are set up at the Panthers 43 after the short punt. You know, Lawrence, speed that he has and Tigers eventually got a touchdown up on the board. 
Speaking of speed, Kirk, Lynn J. Dixon is another oh. freaky true freshman in there. He's a freshman out of Butler, Georgia, who's just a, another huge talent. He figures to be a one-two punch next year with ETN. He's in the game now with a clean uniform yeah, and fresh legs. They just say he's raw. Just a, uh, reminds me a lot of ETN where he was last year. And we keep talking about how much he's grown as a, and become more of a complete back. And I think uh, you'll see Jay Dixon have the same opportunity. And you're right, heck of a one-two punch next year. He's gained 531 yards, mostly in mop-up duty, but he's averaged more than 10 yards per carry this year. Snap infraction. Offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Plenty to achieve, of course, in the remainder of this season, but for Clemson looking forward, they'll lose Renfro, Travion Thompson, the two seniors in the receiving core. Adam Choice moves on. They'll lose some blockers up front like Mitch Hyatt, but really everyone else in this offense back. They get some big names, obviously, to replace on the defensive front. Yeah. And that's time uh, Dixon met in the backfield by Dennis Briggs. You know, most people, when they think of Clemson this year, they think of the senior class. They, they do think of the defense. But overall, th this senior class, chance to, and the numbers could, could still go up. But right now, 52-4. and four. After tonight, they'll have four playoff appearances. Think about being a senior at Clemson. Four playoff appearances, four ACC titles, and already one national title. I mean, you're talking about staggering. has to be the most decorated class, not just in Clemson history. You, you could put that other than Alabama's seniors. You could put that up there with anybody. Why have they done all that? Dabo's words, the eye of the tiger. Focused intensity, passionate, special leadership, very selfless bunch. <laughs> you, 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 can, you can get out and catch it as a guy on the coverage team, but you can't get that close to the returner. T.J. Chase will be called for kick-catch interference. Just try to take it away from the man. Yeah, he went airborne. He's a, he's a receiver, so he's just going up trying to make a play. Yeah, that's uh, that's instinctive, but it's not legal. Continues to be the hallmark of the senior class. Will continue into the playoff, apparently. They were disappointed in themselves. They ran into an Alabama buzzsaw, of course, in the semifinals last year in New Orleans with Kelly Bryant at quarterback. Couldn't get anything going. A very different offensive dynamic, obviously, with Lawrence. Bryant, by the way, is going to decide and announce in a couple of days whether it's Auburn or Missouri, perhaps, his next move, choosing to leave Clemson, unlike Jalen Hurts, who stuck around in Alabama. And thank goodness for the Tide fans, he did as he played a huge role and that comeback today. Yeah, we talked about that comeback and how it was our our mayhem moment of the day. And I just want to tip my cap to Jalen Hurts because in an era where a lot of guys leave. Personal foul, face mask, number 19. That penalty's declined. Kick catch interference against a kicking team number 18. 15-yard penalty, first down. In an era where a lot of guys leave, he decided to stick it out. Hall cuts it back and in the clear and into Clemson territory. Well, that is a nice cut back, a natural run here by Hall. This is part of what makes him so good. Inside zone designed to go to the right. He felt the overflow by the defense and used his vision to cut that cut that back for big yards. He's got 29 of them. He's got it again. Getting updates in that. Big Ten Championship game. My guy Mike Black, former Boise Stater, is over here watching the Mountain West Conference Championship game. That's on ESPN. And Fresno State and Boise State may be headed for overtime in the what was once the blue rug, but is now the white rug. It's a snowstorm up there in Boise. Snow and low-scoring game. Ohio State up 10 when they just started the fourth quarter. But guys, if they do fall short of that playoff bracket, head to the Rose Bowl. Take on Washington. Yet again, it's Carter in the jet sweep. And he shows the speed. Doesn't need much space to get going. And he's out near the first down. Yeah, he and French both do a good job with that jet sweep. We keep talking about how it's a big part of Sean Watson's offense because they lack a, a premier passing game. So they have to use that jet sweep to keep these defenses honest and just have to do something to complement their running game. And it, it turns out pretty good for them. I'm just hanging on in suspense here to see if the Panthers can get in double digits in passing yards. They got more points than pass yards. 
eight of them tonight. Incredible. Pick it four of 14. And so run. Olison not going to get first down yardage as the Tigers in a pile stop him. Linebacker play. And keep in mind, Clemson's playing their backups right now. But Chad Smith, nice job along with J.D. Davis. Being able to navigate, navigate their way through defensive line, eating up those blocks. And J.D. Davis to the outside of that block by Aston. And Chad Smith came down. So they still need a yard. It's fourth down. Offset eye, Aston in front of Olison. Olison tried to stretch the ball across the line to make as Smith tackled him, and it's going to be a first down where they spot it. Well, that took every effort to fight through Chad Smith to come up with that first down, and it's close. They're going to give it to him. Brent Venables and the entire starting defensive line next to him kind of cheering on. This, the back he wanted that stop. Yeah, and also given the, the officials. Look at that. Look at that penetration. I mean, I don't, that's a, like I said, a heck of an effort by Olison to somehow extend that football across the line. Venable's not convinced that he did reach across before he went down. Now it's Hall. Boy, down by 25. They are still not taken to the air. They are just trying to grind out whatever they can on the ground they want you to sit on the edge of your seat to see if they get the 10 yards <laughs> they got two more yards to go boy if you don't you don't talk about an army or a, an option attack not often in 2018 do you see a team it's got five four completed passes actually miami had what was it six completions in the victory over pit yeah last week six yeah, i think yeah. it was yeah For a yard running back comparison court you see forward pass here we do not and that's Hall who's gonna be dropped short and it's another fourth down as the Clemson backups starting to get their uniforms dirty and now Logan Rudolph right back here watch him chase this from behind he, he's a backup defensive end <laughs> he doesn't get many opportunities and so when he does he's gonna play with his hair on fire good speed and a good effort guy from the freshman he says I'm, I'm tired of having a clean jersey I'm gonna get down here in the grass and roll around and yeah, look like I played in a game that was well, a good play what do you think here Kirk fourth and five you Are they gonna run it still waiting. I'm, still, I'm just still waiting on a pass begging for a pass oh, oh no no, it's a miscue and a turnover. Or did he did, did he hold on? It's a, it's a it's a scrum at the bottom. Pickett just fighting with a couple Tigers for the football. It's going to be Clemson football either way, either on downs. What a gentleman! Had a chance to meet him once. The honor it was at a football game, Texas A&M game. He was associated with that school. Quarterback change at Clemson as the Tigers go with Chase Bryce, the guy who came on. Kirk uh, heroically rallied Clemson from behind against Syracuse after Lawrence had been knocked out. Had that great laser pass on fourth and nine to keep the drive going. I, I, I uh, the Bear and I are putting together a postseason Herbie Awards, and you have to come up with moments of the year, plays of the year. That fourth and nine, you could put up there in a top three for plays of the year because what it meant for Clemson, not only that day, but here they are still with a chance to win the ACC and be in the playoff. It's Choice, the bus three, and Choice. Drag down inside the 35. We'll show you that play you were talking about that drive they were back way up needed a touchdown and, and they just had lost kelly bryant nobody really knew at the time who he was and this is the play to t higgins chase bryce makes that throw and eventually etn gets into the end zone and the tigers survive a scare from the orange but that throw i think a lot of fans will appreciate and remember for a long time no doubt and that guy was, it shows you the value of preparation. He was the third string quarterback the previous Sunday. Yep. Bryant leaves. Lawrence gets hurt. And you go immediately into the hot seat and you, you produce. Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott get a lot of the recognition and attention, and they should for this offense because they're co-offensive coordinators. But Brandon Streeter, 
the quarterback coach and former Clemson Tiger quarterback himself does incredible work with these guys. There's Tony Elliott, the, one of the offensive coordinators. But Brandon Streeter, the quarterback coach, does a great job working with them and preparing them for the different opportunities that might come up. Ball start. And Bryce Offense. was ready that day. Number 79, five-yard penalty. Second down. I love that you point that out as one of the moments of the season because sometimes in the chaos of a college football season, it's the forgotten moments. It could happen early in a season in a sport where there's a small margin for error. And if you think back to the game that you and Reese called when I was doing the tennis down there in College Station, and you know AM is is battling from behind and Clemson has to stop a two-point conversion in that game, or they're in overtime playing the lottery against the Aggies. Yeah, yeah, that that was a great win that day in that atmosphere. Uh oh. Look out, Bryce keeps it, has a crease, and it's gonna be Jaws tripped up at the five. He was thinking about scoring there. How about that pit defense? They they all went down on the back. Watch Weaver for 17. There's no way a quarterback's keeping it. And then Chase Bryce gets out into the open field. The safety's gone. Briggs almost has the speed to get it all the way to the end zone. And there's Trevor Lawrence cheering him on. Get in there, man. So close. Pitt's defense full there. First and goal. And there's the young man bouncing it in. Dixon scores. And the next wave of talented Tigers making plays as they stretch the lead. And that's a relief to some Tigers fans. Another interested party is looking in as they go up by 31 with the PHC coming. Just we, we, we serve all customers. We, we, we certainly do. <laughs> that was a, a big score, as you said, and love to see Dixon get a chance to run the football. He is as gifted as any of the backs they have, just needs more reps, more experience. But man, he gets out in the open field. He's he's fun to watch. Six touchdowns for the Tigers tonight. Hugo's still perfect on the season and P8. Couple of touchdowns. He's been stretching that leg out. Just in his big moment there, popped inside the athletic training tent. Don't think it's anything serious. Paris Ford taking a turn and have a turn knocked down across the 15. You know, we talked, Kirk, about the two-point conversion stop by Clemson way back against AM. If you think about this season, involving contending teams, how important the two-point conversion plays were. This is Bedlam. Oklahoma has to hang on as Gundy just rolls the dice and goes for the win. They get the stop, and then Ohio State survives an accurate throw on a two-point conversion against Maryland. So you take away the result reverse the result of those three plays what a different playoff chase it is yeah yeah I mean it in, in every single one of those plays you can go back and if you really dissect them you, you could see how the plays unfolded and how easily they could have gone the either way forward pass attempt by Pittsburgh a chuck down field and it's incomplete December 29th semifinal you wouldn't want to send Alabama to Dallas they would there for if it was Oklahoma end up in Miami I personally don't have Oklahoma in the, the top. It, it's kind of it's kind of simple. I don't get caught up in the conference. I don't get caught up in two teams from one conference. I get caught up in what is the committee trying to do in the final weekend? Give us the best four. Well, if Georgia was four based on the committee coming into the weekend, how in the world can they be right there beating Alabama most of the game, the number one team in the country, and outplaying the number one team in the country and then lose at the end by a great effort by Jalen Hurts and Bama, and they're going to go backwards for that effort? To me, no. They should go forward. And the loss at LSU, most people lose at LSU. So I have no issue with two losses. If you're asking me who the best four teams are, Georgia cannot be left out. There'll be a loud chorus of boos from those who don't, again, want to see two SEC teams, much less the same two yeah, I back to back years. Yeah, I just don't care about that. I'm not here as waving the SEC flag. I'm just being truthful in who the four best teams are. And if they happen to be from one conference, then they happen to be from one conference. Matt Berry in the Ford wrap-up show after the game. He's going to be Sports Center on later on and 
This conversation will continue. We'll give you a variety of opinions on that. I understand what you're saying. I, I think the if they're gonna if they're gonna bang the drum loudly and say best four, best four, best four, then and, and let me give it's you hard to ignore what Georgia has done. I do think that it's it's could be it would be quite historic. There's no precedent for it. I knew half the committee is new. That may play into it. But again, conference championships are supposed to. But they don't. They don't mean anything. And, and, and if the only reason they ever mean something is if it comes down to a point where teams are in that cluster, yeah. and you're going to separate. But you don't have you don't have Oklahoma and Georgia in the I, same cluster. I, I, not not based on what I watched Georgia today. I don't. And and for me, look, if you want to do metrics, that favors Georgia. They're, they're in the top five in office, offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency. One of only three teams in the country that can say that. The other two, Alabama and Clemson. Alabama's 90th, or o Oklahoma, rather, is 90th in defensive efficiency. So I, I just think Georgia's a more complete team. I wouldn't argue with that. I mean, there have been plenty of championship teams, much less playoff teams, that are absolutely elite on one side of the ball, as Oklahoma is, let's face it, that their offense is historically good. Yeah. Level of competition, I get it, as the Gatorade bath has moved toward Dabo Swinney. You got a couple of those defensive linemen, Bryant and Furl, on the case here. This has become a regular thing. He, he comes stained in orange. First, they're going to get they're going to get Venables. They hit him in the head with it. <laughs> he's, he's still all smiles. <laughs> well, after last week, that's a that's a great sign and a great great scene there for. They were coached tough, but they knew they had it coming, and they, boy, they sh showed up today. And even 200 yards total offense by Pitt, and they're going to finish with eight yards passing. That was Sweeney had, had already been dunked. Now, experienced head coach, there's been times when he used to wear, like, like the white sweatshirt.